Greetings! It is a Build the Boat Saturday, and I'm excited because I've got some video help. Yay! <laughs> um, no regular help today. Um, it's Thanksgiving weekend, and Ray Remundo is in New Jersey visiting his family, celebrating Thanksgiving, and so I decided to come outside. It's a brisk 49 degrees today. A little overcast, so it's a little cold working under the shade of the tarp. But my goal today is to get these two floors installed. And the trick about it is now that the boat from from frame 26 on down, there's a contour of the Kilson. If you can see, um, the Kilson begins to uh, have a little shape to it, and so. The floors have to be beveled in order to be actually perpendicular or plumb. Um, but before I do that, I noticed that the aft part of the keelson wasn't at the proper elevation. The reason being, if you recall a couple weeks ago, we jacked up the keelson, but we had not reset this um, furthest aft support. So when I double checked, um, the, sec the section or the support just forward of this one had been moved uh, four and seven eighths inches up. So I needed to adjust this one to move it also four and seven eighths, four and a half. So we took and made a uh, mark, a level to what we needed. If you can see that, those lines, it might be kind of hard. Yep. All right. And so went and jacked up the Kilson. So you see the jack is sitting on a regular old uh, screw automotive jack and held up by a little double two by four column like that. And so we've done that. And so now we have the keelson set at the proper elevation to make sure that whatever bevel we get off of these two frames uh, will be correct and keep those frames truly plumb. So we're gonna go ahead now and attach this support. We've already gotten the uh, screw holes pre-drilled, the screws pre-drilled. And go ahead and screw them in, hopefully. Got it nice and snug. Give it a little extra torque. All right, so now the Kilson has been set to the right elevation. We have a new support. So now we're going to take measurements and figure out what the bevel is. Previously, the bevel was like. Uh, a sixteenth of an inch heavy. So we're going to take that bevel again and see what it is just to make sure. So hopefully I still have the uh, ruler on me. Do I? Yes, I do. Carpenter pants are good huh. for keeping your tools handy. Instead of a dog on tool belt. So I'm using a ruler here instead of a tape measure just because the measurement is so small. I need to be able to uh, see it. So got the level, setting the level on the Kilson. Get a bubble line, get the bubble centered. And looks like. about an eighth of an inch heavy. That's what I need. Yep. So, about an eighth of an inch heavy. So we'll go ahead and uh, press pause. All right, so I found the bevel. Not, not the greatest of light today, but we'll make it work. 
So that's the bevel I need. It's an eighth of an inch, heavy. So I've got the saw set up. We've adjusted it so that it will be able to cut that bevel. If we can see that, it's kind of hard. This little camera. best light again. Anyway, we've got the saw set to make the cut. So I'm just going to run my my uh, gate right down the edge here to give me that cut. So. Set up a table saw, but forget a table saw, forget about it. Good old fashioned skill saw, a circular saw, give us a nice bevel to that. So if you get close on it, you'll see the bevel. Cut. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for what we need. So now we'll go ahead and uh, cut the other one. Take another measurement. So we'll take the other measurement for the other one, cut that one, and then install it. The bevel cut is off just slightly. So what I'm going to do, instead of recutting the entire bevel, I'm going to use a chisel and I'm going to notch that out. So I'm going to go from that right there, which is about a 30 second to zero. So I'm going to use a chisel just to take out this eight inches worth. And again, I'm going to go in a 30 second and to zero. So let's see if I can get this with the camera. So I have used my chisel to relieve, I really don't like this light, to relieve just down to that line. You can see that's just the 30 second down to really zero. Now this is an inch and a half piece of wood but I use my inch chisel because I don't want those lines to go all the way across because as I ch chisel this away it will automatically try to take more material on this end. So I've got those relieved I'm going to go ahead and use a chisel to take it out. So I've done the relief and it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it'll work. <laughs> it uh, Went down from uh, about an eighth of an inch to zero. So you see that. Again, not pretty. Very rough. But it'll work. A um, couple gouges. My chisel is three years old and I haven't sharpened it since I've owned it. But this is just rough carpentry. So let's go ahead and get it installed. Okay, so we got the bevel done. We've got the screw holes pre drilled. Got the thickened epoxy applied, and so now I'm just going to go ahead and put these in. Um, losing daylight, <laughs> but we're going to do the best we can do using one of these easy clamps. They're not the best, but for what I'm doing here, it'll do. So, 
Got it already marked where the floor goes. Gonna smoosh it in. That's an official technical term. Boat builders, smoosh. Look it up if you don't believe me. And if you've ever worked with one of these clamps, any clamp really, it tends to pull to one side. It favors one side. So what we're going to do, I've got this tacked in on the line. I'm going to screw this side in, then adjust it. So I'm going to screw gun up here. I'm going to screw. And let's see if we can do this without too much hassle. Voila. It is working. My plan is working. <laughs> so, okay, dog. Have a good time. All right. This one over a tad bit. Center of the line. There we go. All right. That's one. I'm going to go. And what I didn't show you is I already wiped these down with uh, acetone a little earlier. Right before we hit record, gotta get that smoosh on. Try to get it center my line, which is pretty hard to do on both sides. A little bit of epoxy on my screw. finger behind it so that it doesn't pull too far over. Saw that, but it pulled it right on the line. All right, that's it. Take number one tool and the epoxy off. Get a nice double, or what do we call that? Nice bead. And clean the back side. You don't have to worry about taking a picture of that. It's not going to show up. Okay. Not really enough left to fill the nail holes. It's kind of you just don't don't know. It's kind of chilly, so I just want to find the acetone side of the rag, and I will clean off pretty good the side where the frame goes. I don't want any obstructions where the frame is going to go. much. All right. Well, it's been a quick work day, but I reached my goal. I got two floors installed. I'm going to probably do two more during the week. I'm going to try 
to build frames. Let's see. This is 24, 25. I've got it sitting over there. I'm going to try to build frames 26, 28, and 29 during the week so that by next build a boat Saturday, we'll be installing some more frames. So, thank you all for watching. Last week's video has done extremely well about a thousand views in a week. So, that's pretty good. Hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving, or if you're in a part of the world where there is no Thanksgiving, hope you had a fantastic week. And uh, we'll be back next week <laughs> with a little more Build a Boat Saturday. Till next time, peace and blessings.